Warning. Although my content is usually family-friendly, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such, will contain blood, language, suggestive themes, and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. We'll grab a fixed slab of ribs and douse it in queso. We're going. <laughs> 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 well, no, because we're going to back to court and we're going to cross-examine Mr. Wow. Texas. <laughs> okay, but I was not expecting that. Good. I hope we, the audience, wasn't either. On trial day, th well, trial day two, but it's day three of the case, February twenty fourth, twelve fourteen p.m. District Court, courtroom number nine. I'm going to interrogate Jake Marshall. The court oh. will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. Shoot! Skies are gone. Where'd they go? <laughs> yeah, Emma didn't come back. Allow me to call the next witness to the stand. The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. <laughs> <laughs> this is court! You are not allowed to drink! Witness, please state your name and occupation. Me, partner. Oh, I'm just a man, same as you, wandering the trails of civilization. Occasionally helping the elderly cross intersections when needed. Oh, I know! You're a patrolman! As for my name, if you listen hard enough, you can hear the howling wind calling it out. <laughs> Is it like the winds are like, Officer Marshall? To be exact, it's Jake Marshall, your honor. Howling wind? I've never heard Edgeworth described that way before. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You were in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime took place? Is this correct? According to the papers, partner. What do you mean? A desperado's soul is as boundless as the desert sands. No paper can sum it up. Maybe it's best to get on with this quickly. I cannot wait for him to Please share with us your testimony of the day of the crime. In English? <laughs> What sticks and not English? <laughs> Witness testimony, <laughs> Dave the Crime. My job is to keep a wary eye on that bone orchard. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at a street side saloon at the time it went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. But there isn't two security systems, there's only one. <sighs> I can't say I particularly care for your attitude. I can't say I would care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. <laughs> wow! <laughs> My gosh! Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? Oh wow, I picked up on that fast. I mean the security cameras and the ID card reader. Oh. I reckon even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Yes, well, what about the fingerprint activated locks inside the evidence room? Fingerprint activated locks? What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? He's not being very helpful. <laughs> He's not that good with machines, or with following orders. Why are you in the police force? <laughs> I know! You have the worst <laughs> job for your type! Everyone's got their weaknesses now, don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? This one seems like trouble. Y yes Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, security cameras and ID card reading. That's not exactly like a... Well, yeah, everybody has this. So he, I think he's totally smart on security camera systems and stuff. Well, it's really simple to figure that out. Like, because the security camera feeds are in the main room, and you need to scan your ID in order to get in. So right. And if you're in charge of security, yeah. The room, well, just you for that, have to just know for that day, how to do but it. yeah. Sure. How exactly did you keep an eye on the evidence room? I just made sure nothing moved in the security camera monitor. That room's so still. Even Tom dies in there. I was just a caretaker who interred the recordings. You interred them? Videos of nothing aren't that useful. When the time would come, I'd erase the tape. What the heck, man? If nothing unusual is recorded, tapes are to be erased every six hours. Oh, okay, that's fine. Each time I'd erase a tape, it felt like I was erasing a part of my life. This guy has a flair for the dramatic, but it isn't going to do him any good. Every six hours. So, actually... So, okay. so in actuality, you don't physically enter the evidence room. They said I was supposed well, to make rounds three times a day. Hold it! We'll put... We'll hit him with the ID card list. But you made your rounds on the day of the crime, right? Ain't you heard a word I said, partner? I told you that ain't my style. What is your style? Just not doing your job? Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. 
No desperado I know lets rules get in his way. No desperados I know join the police force! <laughs> so, Officer Marshall, on the day of the crime, just between you and me, I didn't set foot in the evidence room that day. Ha 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 ha! Okay, we can, we can hit him up. With what? He went in! No, he didn't. His number was on there, wasn't it? No. I thought what it about was the in rubber glove found there? Sorry, partner, I can't say I know what Open that's that about. court record. That's what I was trying to do, but it made me click okay. elsewhere. I'm pretty freaking sure his name was in there. Nope. We've got the sevens. Meekins. Edgeworth. Okay, maybe he's the lucky number seven. Could be. <laughs> that sounds like a weird number he'd have. Sorry, partner, can't say I do. I haven't been oh, in we that crypt in weeks. Fingerprints. What fingerprints? Like the his fingers on the door yeah, that's when true. we figured it out. How does this guy Is avoid that, being fired? It would have had to have been recent enough that they weren't erased. Yeah. Besides, that room's protected by two security systems. You used to be a detective, so you've used the evidence room in the past, correct? Of course. Back in the day, my locker was a gold mine of evidence. And yet, you didn't know about the fingerprint locking mechanism? Sorry, partner. I ain't good with machines. I couldn't even tell you how a bike works. That's quite, uh, incredible. The sensors on the locker handles cannot be seen. It's well known that some detectives are unaware of their presence. Now that he mentions it, Detective Gumshoe said something like that too. At any rate, it doesn't seem that this is relevant to the cape crime. Yeah. Can you tell us what you were doing when the crime took place? If I remember right, I was at a street side saloon. <laughs> What were you doing in a place like that? I was eating spaghetti. Not even Angel's steak lunches can beat that part where Vongole sepia pasta. Wow. Do you mean to tell us you abandoned your police duties to eat some noodles? <laughs> not all desperados eat tacos, partner. That's not what I meant. I hope this at least has taught you a lesson. That's strange. This is usually where Edgeworth says... Did you not want to raise this year? <laughs> mm -hmm. I've got tenure. It's not just for professors. <laughs> Out of ammo, Officer Marshall? I will say, Edgeworth's being very quiet. Yeah, that's right, partner. Or as you'd call it, evidence. If you plan to pin me to this crime, then you'd better draw. Otherwise, you're just wasting my time. My steel horse is waiting to carry me back west into the sunset. Hmm... One thing seems clear, despite being responsible for guarding the evidence room, the witness doesn't appear to have seen anything. Texans don't take orders from anyone. Everyone knows that. Okay. Apparently your superiors don't! Okay, I have a trump card up my sleeve, so I'd best keep my cool. Before I use it though, I'd better up the ante. So you were saying show his fingerprints? I think so, um, but that was our trump card, right? So maybe we need to show something else before that. Well, he's basically saying, look, I wasn't there that day, but we have proof that he was. Okay, then yeah. Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd? That is, you being called in to testify like this? After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime. And yet you dragged me down here. Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or, to be exact, a handprint. Hmm. Listen real good, partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crypt. I pay my respects, that is, make my rounds about once a month. It's only natural my fingerprints would be in there. I only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. Oh yeah, He's well, I had, a, I had a nosebleed that day. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Your bloodstained fingerprints were at the crime scene? The blood was wiped away, however, a luminol test clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall? Seems to me, there ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. I take it you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall? About the blood-stained fingerprints? Very well, you may begin your testimony about your fingerprints. Found at the scene of the crime. 
just realized, yeah, there are no characters for you to voice. Sorry about that. That's okay. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. This at least is interesting. One of them just happened to be in the same place as the blood-stained handprint. Well, I'll be darned! <laughs> the murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. It would have come up with the murderer. The blood stain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See? I had nothing to do with it. How did you know the murderer was wearing gloves? Probably the security footage. Hmm, the witness's explanation appears valid. Although there's room for doubt. Life wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. That's true. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. This guy's hiding something. I can feel it. Now's my chance to prove it. Cross-examination. Bloodstained fingerprints. Alright, this guy is like, really? That's because you, how did you put it, pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. That locker happens to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I said. That is the locker I used when I was a detective. The locker I still use. Did we look at the paper that was hanging out? We couldn't open the door, so no. We couldn't. We couldn't pull it out? Okay. All that's in there now, though, is a heap of broken dreams. Why wouldn't they, like, reuse it? Mm, I weird. see. The police department apparently has a very low budget. <laughs> It'd be strange if my prints weren't all over that locker. Apparently his fingerprint data was never changed. He must have been using the fingerprint lock without even knowing it. Marshall's fingerprints updated in the court record. One of them just HAPPENED to be in the exact same place in the exact same part. Wow. So then, what about the bloody handprint? Wasn't mine. It's no mystery. Please explain. My locker is covered with my fingerprints. It just so happened. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. The chances of that happening are a million to one. On the contrary, one could argue just the opposite. The chances of that not happening are a million to one. Get one thing straight, partner. You ain't gonna get no reward for me with a mere fingerprint. You wanna know why? They're unrelated, eh? That's probably going to be the one we have to cross. Unrelated? They're as different as night and day. Kind of like cereal and cereal. Yeesh. One's got to do with breakfast while the other's a type of murder. I always yeah. mixed them up as a kid. He's right. Although they're seemingly alike, they're actually totally different. I don't see what homonyms have to do with this. Hmm. Didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves, eh? Uh. How do you know that? I may be a loner, but I still do my job. I keep up on the reports. There was a blood stain at the scene, though thought to be left by the murderer. That's right. It was found on Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think we tried that too. Hmm, so that would mean the murderer wearing gloves happened to place his hand on top of Officer Marshall's head fingerprint. That's the only logical conclusion. Are you starting to get the picture, partner? The picture? This seal of blood? In the desert, it's just food for the buzzards. There's only one reality, and that's this. The security tape. So long as my trail isn't in there, you can't say otherwise. This isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. We can rewatch it. Please consider carefully where you're going with this cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. <laughs> Too bad it wasn't me in that video, Rat Partner. What do you mean by that? You want to tie me to this crime, isn't that right, Partner? If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. But that video is next to useless! It's full of blind spots! Blind spots? Places you can't see! The camera's panning back and forth. The floor isn't shown. If someone was familiar with the camera's position, he could leave the room without being caught on tape. We don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. But that is true. Yeah. Well, Mr. Wright, if you can show us evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so now. 
show evidence where there's no evidence in the video. I want to watch the video again. Which okay. I know is super riveting because you can't skip through it. <laughs> Goes over. Nothing on the locker. Walks in. Can you even see if they have gloves on? Yeah, he's wearing, he's wearing gloves. gloves. Okay. <laughs> Meekins is like. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Remains open. Bloodstain does not appear. So, that's what I was checking to see. Right. <sighs> I don't think there's any evidence in the video, then. I might be walking right into Officer Marshall's trap. I better try and find out a little more information. It seems we should be moving back to the testimony. That must not be it. Very thing. well. Officer Marshall, can you please give your testimony again? Okay. Was it supposed to be we looked at the video? So there- I remember last recording session you saw something in the video where you are like, Wait, what? But then forgot about it. No, I remember- so I thought I saw someone on the left side of the camera. Oh. When it was panning back, but it I think it was just my eyes. We were doing oh. it really late at night, so was, I wasn't seeing very clearly. Well, not really late. It was like 8, eh. 30. Okay, but it was like dark, and we didn't have lights on. Um, too bad it wasn't me in the video, right? I can't let him squirm out of this one. I've got to find something. Something decisive to tie Officer Marshall to the this crime. The video. You want to try it, then? Yeah. Very well. Allow me to point out your mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being the one making the mistake. Alright. Now then, let's have another look at the video. Show us this incriminating evidence of the witness, Officer Jake Marshall. Mm. <laughs> I find it interesting that you like this music. It's cute. I think it's one of the worst songs in the game, actually. But that's just me. It's it too, is like an animatronic. super simple. Also, how is that a badger? I don't know. Left something at the scene. Come on, it even hides the face with the flag. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that timed up just perfectly. And the Boo Badger's not even supposed to be there normally. So, like, how did he figure out how to not be seen? Pause. Or just fast forward and then pause. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that's supposed to be a badger. Yeah, that's what I thought was a person there. Oh, this? Yeah. Uh, that's like a person standy for <coughs> practicing shooting. <coughs> okay. There's no blood stains. Can you go backwards to the crime scene? Unpause and then. Okay, pause. Is there anything? Is that blood on the wall? Where? There? No. No? I think this is the last time oh, I have to watch Oh, then all of a sudden that appeared. Ooh, good call. All of a sudden that appeared. That's what it is. Bringing our attention back to the security camera is a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. The days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. <laughs> Could you sum up what you have to say in, say, eight words or less? Very well. You can clearly be seen in this video. Exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. The key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. See this locker that has a white cloth sticking out? This is the witness's locker. 
Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. Oh! The white cloth! It's gone! What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. Then, it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker when the camera was turned away. Order! Order! It would seem that's the only- HOLD YOUR HORSES! Sorry, partner, but you got the wrong man. So what if my locker was opened? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. The murderer needed to hide something, so he opened the locker and stuck it in. It's not my fault he happened to choose mine. But it's the whole fingerprint thing. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a wanted man? This guy isn't just plain dumb. He, he really, really doesn't, doesn't know. know. <laughs> uh, I hate to rain on your parade, but you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I'll call your bluff. You say I open that locker, now prove it! Just show the locker. No! <laughs> you can talk the talk, alright, but you've got a long ways to go before you can walk the walk. Mr. Wright, I think even I could prove this <laughs> one! <laughs> Sorry, Your Honor! If that's Officer Marshall's locker, then only he can open it. I should know this. Come on, partner. A revolver only holds five bullets. The question is how many you got left. Oh my gosh, that's great, because we only have five HP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, yeah. A uh, fingerprint sensor? Yay! <laughs> we talked about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. What kind of crazy talk is this? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people on the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. Well, he's not right, so... So, Sheriff, what do you have to say in eight words or less? Beef jerky. I only got one word for you, partner. No! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> You've been looking forward to this, haven't you? I was literally saying earlier, you can probably hear it, but you were super loud. Order! 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 Witness, explain yourself! If this is a joke, it's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you, this is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. Also, could you tell us your ID number? That'd be great. Olay, please answer the question. <laughs> what is he now, a bullfighter? Olay! That's all right, Officer Marshall. I believe we can figure the rest out from here. We can? Have a look at these floor plans. There's no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Yet, Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so, then where was the witness? It seems Mr. Wright has an answer. That's right. The only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? Uh... V. <laughs> Obviously, he was stuffed in the in locker! locker. <laughs> Officer Marshall was standing right here! Hmm... So Officer Meekins didn't notice him standing there? That's almost as credible as Meekins' warp theory. <laughs> Your chamber's empty, partner. Better reload. Now they're gaining up on me. Perhaps you should think a little more about where Officer Marshall was. Officer Meekins should have seen him in the evidence room. That means the only place he could have been would be... Well then, let's hear it. Try putting it at K. Sure. <laughs> Obviously, he was Mike Meekins! <laughs> Officer Marshall was standing right here! Hmm... So Officer Meekins didn't notice him standing there? Oh, no, it's the same thing. Darn it. I thought it would be like, he, there would be special dialogue for me. Like, he was Meekins! <laughs> Officer Marshall was standing right here! 
there, but that's... That's where the victim, Detective Goodman, was! Correct. Unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in this video is Officer Marshall. It was you dressed up like Detective Goodman. But that's preposterous. Officer Meekins witnessed the detective at the crime scene. Once he saw the man's face, he'd know for sure. He didn't see it. May I point out, though, that Officer Meekins did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. When I entered the evidence room, I asked him to show his card, sir! Yes, and how did Detective Goodman respond? HE SUDDENLY PULLED A KNIFE ON ME! Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If the man had his ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on his ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have anything to say to this, Officer Marshall? Beef I love jerky. beef jerky. <laughs> You've got quite an imagination, partner. We got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? He's still denying it. You're gonna have to do better than that to break a detective. Unless you have hard evidence proven I dressed up as the victim. Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative dip disposition. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. <laughs> you just did earlier! <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence? Any evidence proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim? Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're the one who couldn't take the desert heat. Ah! This can't be happening. It's so obvious he's the one. What can I do? Hmm. It looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you've run into a wall with no place to go, return to the basics. The basics? For me, that would be what Mia used to tell me. Nick, try thinking outside the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise. But rather, I should look for evidence that came about because he was in disguise. Why do you think this locker was opened in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yet he did, despite the chance it might have been discovered later as it had been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. According to the defense's argument, Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. It's cause my jerky is The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of that locker seems to indicate that he opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps... Perhaps the video is the key to all of our unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so this video is my only shot. Very well. Let's take yet another look at the security tape. After committing the crime, the witness opened the locker to put away the white cloth. Please show us why the witness had to open his locker. <laughs> he hated the blue badger so much. Do you know? Well... There would have been evidence that the guy- the white cloth would have had bloodstains on it? Sure enough. Oh wait, hang on. If we need to choose something else. Whoa! <laughs> Mika's left ear! <laughs> It's that. Well, what do you have to say to that? Alright, partner. You really want to know the reason I had to open my locker? Why? So I can stuff you in there! Wow. Huh? I'm sure the world would be a better place if you sent off to the boneyard. Dang! Dude, come on! That's not cool. 
Unfortunately, unsolved cases can't be stored in the evidence room. No, I'm an unsolved case? Something went wrong in that evidence room. That's why Marshall had to open his locker. The accident itself is the reason. I better have another crack at this. Yep. Thankfully it's... it stayed paused. Well, that's because of the safe state. I didn't even notice he had blood on his shoulders. For some reason, you disguised yourself as Detective Goodman. And entered the evidence room. I don't know what the reason was. Yet. Yet. However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When asked to show your ID card, you pulled the knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked, and the white cloth you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat? You couldn't just walk out like that. So you hid the coat in your locker. Not bad, huh, partner? Now then, Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underestimated y'all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, if you were only half as persistent as you were today, we all wouldn't have to be here now, would we? Officer Marshall, tell the court what you did. All of it. Alright. Seems the time has come. Marshall's Confession. This'll be good. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out and managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. I mean, I guess that's true, but... Yeah, that puts us in a bit of a pickle then. <laughs> so the supposed victim was really you? But there's one thing I still don't understand. Large quantities of blood traces were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's the donor. It looked like too much blood for that. <laughs> Officer okay. Meekins must have gushed blood like right. to nobody's end. Well, Meekins <laughs> cut his hand and then... Somehow, there's blood on this dude's shoulder, so... Well, it was because Meekins grabbed him. And so the blood got from his hand onto the guy's shoulders. Oh. I thought he cut him with the knife. Okay. No. Only Meekins got cut in that room. When you say it, you mean... Do you even have to ask, partner? The SL9 incident. Maybe the dude... Maybe he also cut his hands. He's always wearing these, like, the piano gloves is the only way I can describe it. <laughs> yep. With the fingerless... Two years have passed since that case was closed. It was going to completely end with the transferal that day. Not if I have anything to do with it. That incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When a case is closed, only the detective who was in charge of it can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at it myself one more time. No matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. Why does he care so much about it? That day was my last chance. That's why I... Hmm. I'm very curious now as to what this mass killing was. Because clearly, Emma knows this guy before. Like, she was yep. like, oh, he was so nice, and now he's just being all whatever about it. So, I mean, he wasn't there to witness it, right? He wasn't at the witness. He was one of just the investigators. Just one of the investigators. Okay. I'm curious to see what that is about. Yeah. Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transferal, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. Mmm, because he was the leader. Okay. Yep. So you did it to fool the security camera. And the detective's ID card? I stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman started filling out the lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's office parking lot. The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. So essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? 
I mean the fingerprint activated lock, of course. No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Normally, that locker shouldn't have opened. So it opened because a rubber glove was stuck between the door by chance? Then Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. Can I see the IDs again? The ID li list? Yes. So... So this is when Miles Edgeworth went to pick up the screwdriver for Gant. This is when Meekins put the blue badger in there. That's when Jake Marshall, disguised as Goodman, went in to steal the evidence, and then Meekins came in like right after that to stop him. And also to get the blue badger out. Okay. And we don't know anything about that. Is there someone who can automatically get into any locker in the police department? No. No? Not no. even Gant? Not even Gant can do okay. that. You pulled a knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off? Let's just say I was a little surprised. I only planned on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is a one in a million type of person. Mistaking a detective for an intruder and demanding to be shown his ID? I'll have to think a little more about his raise this year. When did Edgeworth get so much influence? <laughs> and He's probably the next top <laughs> prosecutor. <laughs> anyway, he threw himself at me and I ended up cutting him slightly. I'm sorry it had to turn out that way. With me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I carry with me everywhere. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Aren't you not allowed to have weapons in court? <laughs> this is my razor. <laughs> Hmm, so what happened next? Well, yeah, this is not a normal court, though. So you did your research beforehand. Those who got into the desert go unprepared, don't live long, partner. I didn't think it would make much a difference, though. The security taper is erased every six hours. If all had gone as planned, no footage would have been left. However, you bloodied your coat in your struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, the jig would have been up. I opened my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So what you're saying is on that day... There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 515. But the blood found at the crime scene certainly indicates that a crime took place. Well, yeah, he has a crime. What are you, blind? The victim shown on that tape is me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from the locker? Actually, no I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. That's what I thought. What? Mr. Edgeworth, where is that evidence? It's still missing, your honor. Detective Goodman's locker was already empty. So someone must have gotten in there. Someone already. else stole the evidence. Maybe Goodman, because he's the only one who could open the locker. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Fire away, partner. It's free country. <laughs> Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID, injuring a police officer? This is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. It can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are ever a valid solution. <laughs> like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine. And I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm. The witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. Another... Oh. I can't just forget the SL9 incident. You know why? No! Tell us! <laughs> <laughs> but that case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? That's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Doc was convicted for those crimes. One thing I can say for sure, he deserved the, his sentence. I remember the Joe Dark case. It involved serial murders, didn't it? I don't intend to complain about how it turned out, but there's something that still bothers me. Something went down at that trial. Something no one will talk about. What happened? I don't know. 
That's what I'm trying to figure out. Why is he so concerned with that incident? Maybe I should present him with what I think his real reason is. I had a feeling we'd wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way to that case. I'd better take Except another look at the files. No, he was involved. Take a look at the files. This is something you didn't really notice. Okay. If we go to the victims... There is another marshal. Yep. I didn't look at the victims as All much. Right. Officer Marshal, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Christmas! <laughs> I have the SL9 incident file here. The name's Marshall is mentioned in here. In a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall? Are you related to this man? Oh, then, um, Gumshoe took it out of the locker. If they were in there. We, ha we have the... No, these are, this was in the records room. Oh, this is in the records yep. room. Never mind. Neil Marshall? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard of it, the name. Two years ago. Oh, he was... He received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. Great! What? A prosecutor? He must be talking about the King of Prosecutors Award. Oh boy. No, I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation to you? He was my brother. Yeah, that makes sense. He was investigating the murders with Damon Gant, chief of police at the detective at the chief detective at the time. Chief, but yeah. Chief of police now. Bigger title. Oh, okay. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. Hey, bud. Joe okay, Zark. he looks like um a officer from Star Wars. <laughs> Grand Moff Tarkin? <laughs> I don't know. One of them with like the scar yeah, on his I, face I, that like is he the one that gets choked? Oh, okay. A lot of them. It's, it's a lot of them of, get it's choked. It's one of them that from like episode four, or five, or six. Oh, okay. Just throw. Yeah, them I, I see that. Okay. My brother fought Dark and was killed. No. Oh. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. He was arraigned and incarcerated. The case was finally closed, at least according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. Because Texas. And that's it? That's your reason for your insane actions? There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day the SL9 case could be reopened. Not satisfied with its resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. The things that happen by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time the murder at the prosecutor's office occurred, this fake murder was going on at the police department. Chance? It's got to be more than just that. So if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. Which in turn means... Only one person could have committed the crime. Rabbit trail. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky. Yeah, big one by rabbit trail, I guess. But, but wait, a verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial. Which is why we examined the incident at the police department today. But there's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remained the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. Seems to me, 
This boy's got the draw on you, partner. All the mysteries at the police department have been uncovered. No contradictions remain. The murder took place at the prosecutor's office, and the only suspect is Lana Skye. There was no errors in the testimony of the witness Angel Star. That's bogus! Yeah. If you have a response, make it one word or less. OBJECTION! <laughs> Arrgh! I rest my case. It seems this trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time disproving the alleged murder at the police department. There's no doubt what I proved today is true. The apparent murder on the security camera's tape really was fake. But I didn't realize that would end up proving Lana guilty. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Hey, what's up? Your Honor, wait! Emma! The defense has an objection! A scientific objection! Right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright, are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor, oh, uh... In a sense? Please, Your Honor. All I'm asking is for a minute of your time. Please hear us out. Mr. Edgeworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you free. Oh, sweet. I... I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to the Joe Dark killings. Now that she mentions it... The names of both Sky Sisters were in that file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing. The other handprint. You mean the traces of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker? But no fingerprints were found on it, right? Maybe it's the old guy who made noodles! <laughs> No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So, I ran over there and looked at it again. Holy cow! That's far. So, you, did you find something? Um, no! Huh? Sorry. I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Um, is that all? <laughs> Please don't be mad. I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. <laughs> but Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If we can find something wrong with them, or if we can't find something wrong with them, please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. Me? Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright, with regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um... Yeah. It appears the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Can we just get it tested? Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Yeah, we should have a blood test on this, but I haven't done that yet, which is stupid. Mr. Wright, I'm sorry I can't be of more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Y yes, Your Honor. If ever I've needed to concentrate, it's now. What could be wrong with the handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm missing? I object! There's no problem! I object. <laughs> what happens if we say this? I've gotta be honest. I don't see anything wrong with it. Still... If I give up now, Lana's going to be convicted for sure. This handprint left at the crime scene clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is your grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intently at those four plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these four plans. Something is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? 
Yes, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's got to be something I can use. The question is, which item can prove something is missing in the four plans? POT! What? POT! The pot! The unstable jar? Although, yeah. Let's try it. As they say back west, even a blind <laughs> man can hit with buckshot. That is, so long as he's facing the general direction. Yeah, I wasn't sure. That was just, I was like, the pot! <laughs> it has to be here! <laughs> it seems Mr. Wright's not sure which direction to face. It's no use. The more evidence there is, the more wrong choices! <laughs> <laughs> just calm down, Mr. Wright. Try and remember what the evidence room was like on the day of the crime. Oh, let's watch the video. What is it that bothers me about the blood mark? Please allow me another chance, Your Honor. I'll prove it this time. Oh, you want to watch the video again? Yeah, because it's the most riveting thing ever. Oh. The blue badger was in front of it the whole time. Yep. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. <laughs> Yay! What about that piece of plywood? The Blue Badger, mascot of the police force, defender of truth, guardian of proof. <laughs> Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the four plans of the crime scene. The Blue Badger is not here. So? So watch what happens when we put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well? Well, what? <laughs> That's right. So long as the Blue Badger is dancing here, it would be impossible to place a handprint at this spot on the locker. What? <laughs> Has a heart attack, drops dead. Is he wearing high heeled boots? Yep. Oh my god. So that means. Uh, just what exactly does that mean? It means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found on that locker. Don't look at me! I didn't put it there! Mr. Wright! Think this through scientifically! Emma! On that afternoon... Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue badger to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it would be impossible to leave a handprint on that locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in. Just one moment! I will not allow such far-fetched balderdash in my courtroom! May sound far-fetched, Your Honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in the police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once, but twice. But but how? One time was captured on this tape taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is the other time. Someone bled prior to the struggle shown on this tape. It had to have been Detective Goodman when he was really murdered! That's ridiculous! I refute you! The murder portrayed in this security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, that does not explain the blood mark found on the locker. So then, assuming this murder you purport really happened, when did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves it occurred. When did the first incident occur? Had to have been seven, 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 seven. To surmise, the defense claims that prior to Officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was disguised as Detective Goodman, another incident took place in that evidence room. The blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well, then tell us. When did this first incident occur? Proof must be presented. Proof that shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, will the defense please present its evidence that shows when the first crime took place? It's the pot! Oh. This is the proof! It's quite simple, you see. If it's so simple, then don't get it wrong. Huh? Uh, if pot was an acceptable excuse, we wouldn't need police. <laughs> the first crime 
took place before the Blue Badger was brought to the room, right? Say, when was the Blue Badger brought there anyway? Don't we have a time chart among our evidence items that lists the time? But it checked the court record! Proof that shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, let's take a look at the Look how, how much evidence we have. We do have a lot for this case. If the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the perpetrator would have had to have entered the room. In order to do so, an ID card is required. An ID card? Oh! The ID card record! Officer Meekins brought the Blue Badger panel into the evidence room at... Let's see here. 4.50 p.m. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be... 4.40 p.m. Ah! Ah! Miles Edgeworth! Just what have you done?! <laughs> I never figured you had nerve, boy. Put off the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Hmm? Nope, I ain't getting it. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminol test that blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away by the real murderer. I would have had just ten minutes to carry the victim, to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. He's like, I would do it if I had time. But that I would mean can't. the crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let's look at the chart again. Okay. There's only one other card number remaining: seven, 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 seven. Talk about a lucky number. But wait, that doesn't make sense! How could Officer Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with 777777777. Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP! Find out whose ID number is 777777777777! That's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look up the owner of that ID card. At least, at present. What?! Explain yourself, son. The ID number 777-7777 belongs to somebody with a uh -huh! rank of captain or higher. Uh -huh! Someone who is a so-called executive officer. We don't have the authority to inquire into uh -huh! such a person's identity. I called it! <laughs> we don't know that yet. But that's ridiculous! Just how- I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There is one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge filed against an executive is accepted. An official charge. You're all alike, aren't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask a question. Yes. No, not to you. To her, the defendant sitting over there. Your own little executive. B Vana? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course we've looked up her ID number. And it's not 777-7777. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I want to ask. All I want to know is one thing about that incident. The SL9 incident? Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only use legitimate evidence? Do you need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago. I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. At the time, we... Occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. L lana I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? 
Can you look at me, an investigator in that crime, in the eye and say that you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't! I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why don't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to, in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lana! Even if it involved forging evidence. See? That's what I'm talking about. No. No! Order! 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 Lana's remarks caused such a stir, the chaos in the courtroom could not be quelled. The conclusion of the trial would have to wait until the following day. Well, I guess that's good for us. Yep. <laughs> that was a long one, but that was a good one. Yeah. So now you're like, I know it was Gant. Because you're, you're so sure that Gant is that seven number. It has to be. Okay, I don't think Lana would actually be the murderer. I think she could be, but I don't think it is. <laughs> like, we're doing all this stuff. All right. It would literally be for nothing if that's the case. Um, who else is an executive? He's the only one we've met. Winston Payne! <laughs> He's not here! <laughs> I the love. prosecution! <laughs> Anyhow, look forward to the next episode. We'll probably be... Or no, we're going to have to do two episodes for the investigation, I think. Anyhow, really long. Okay. look forward to that. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.